Hi everyone, this uh, example demonstrates how to use what I call advanced. Of course, you could uh, just print out the word hello world like this, but that's boring. Sometimes you want an advanced message box, something that has more pizzazz to it or purpose. So uh, here's the example. When I click this button, it just pops up hello world. Now notice, in this boring message box, Romello, we have the phrase hello world and we have nothing here in the blue title bar. And we have an OK button. That's boring. Sometimes it serves your purpose, but sometimes you want more than that. So let's learn how to do that. As most of this is explained in my lecture notes, but let's uh, look at it in an interactive way. We can specify a second parameter here by typing a comma and then something else. Like, quote, fun game. If I do that when I run the program and click the, the button, the message box, notice, it has a title to it up here that's, that is whatever you typed out in the double quotes here as the optional second parameter that's in the parentheses of the show method. So that's that. There's more that you can do. You can type another comma and then type a third parameter, which if you read the, the help pop up here, that third parameter can be something called message box buttons. And Visual Basic even gives you this handy dandy drop down and it shows you all the possible options that you can uh, choose from. There are only limited kinds, but at least there are some options. This first one we see is called abort, retry, and ignore. And you see the second one's OK, and the third one's OK, cancel, and so on. So let's uh, just study the one called yes, no. That's a popular one. By double clicking that entry in the drop down here, it puts up, uh, uh, it puts in the entry message box buttons dot yes, no. So let's run the program with that third parameter specified in the show method. When I click this button, here's the message box we get. We have a hello world, of course. We have fun game showing up here as the title, but we also have two different buttons, yes and no. Unlike the plain OK button that you get if you don't type out this advanced stuff. Notice that if you want the buttons, but you don't want the title, you could put just empty double quotes there in for the second parameter. So instead of fun game, I, have, I, now, I now have the empty string typed in there. You do have to put something, but you can put an empty string so that now when I run the program, you'll notice that there is no uh, title here, but I still get these interesting buttons. There's all kinds of variations here, and we're not finished yet. There's more that we can do. There's a fourth optional parameter that you do need to know for the test in this chapter. And this fourth option lets you put in an icon. It lets you put in what they call message box icons. You have limited choices, asterisk, error, exclamation, hand. I, I don't really, uh, I'm not familiar with all of these, and you certainly don't have to memorize them in this class, but you should be aware of their existence. Um, I might choose the one called uh, warning. For this example, I'm going to put in warning and uh, run the program and let's check out what a warning icon looks like in the current version of the operating system Windows, uh, Windows 7 in this example. Okay, there's your warning icon. Take it or leave it. We can't change that to a different graphic. It's not that flexible. So there you go, folks. Those are four things that you can have in the parentheses of your message box show. There are other parameters. There are many others that you can chain along here, but they're beyond the scope of this course. And if you want to uh, read, read about them on your own, that's fine.
Continuing with our example, I would like to point out that you can't the order of these buttons that you uh, are choosing. In this uh, situation right here, I have yes and no buttons. You can't put the no on the left and the yes on the right. And as far as I know, you can't change the shape or the color of those buttons. So you're limited, but at least this is easy stuff. If you didn't use Visual Basic, if you used some other computer languages, it would be a lot more work and effort to have anything even close to a message box pop up, let alone having uh, a graphic and different kinds of buttons. We could build a whole new project, a whole, I'm sorry, we could insert a whole new form to this project, and we could resize that form, and we could put our own custom buttons on that form, like this. And if you wanted the no to be on the left, I guess you could do that by putting the word no, or if you wanted the word uh, uh, in French, the word no is non. You could put non on the left, and you could put we oui on the right, or C si in Spanish. Yeah, if you wanted to, in French it's O-U-I. If you wanted to, you could create your own custom message box. And you could cause that message box, that form really, to pop up when somebody clicks this button. If you were to do that, you would have form2.show instead of messagebox.show. But message boxes are built into Visual Basic, and they're convenient because they're, they do have a couple different variations, as I'm explaining in this video. OK, moving on. How do you control or know whether the person clicked the yes or the no? That's what I'm going to explain now. By creating a variable, I'll just name it answer, and making it an integer at the top of this method, I can now set answer equal to whatever that message box is. This looks strange to us because we never studied this with a message box before. We've never analyzed, we've never analyzed how a message box could have a choice of buttons. So by typing this code right here, this if statement, we can check to see if answer is equal to 7 or if answer is equal to 6. By using an if else if statement, and I'm going to reverse these, uh, excuse me for a second. If the person clicks yes, the number 7 is used behind the scenes in Visual Basic to um, get stored in the variable answer. So if the yes is clicked, six is stored in answer, and because answer does equal six, the if statement is considered true and the program does exit. In this situation, I might want to ask the person are you sure you want to exit? You've seen that in professional software, where you get a chance to not exit the program when you thought you were going to exit the program. Now, if the person types, clicks the word no, then this else if ends up being true, and e.cancel could be used if um, I typed it correctly. As I was saying, setting answer equal to six means that the person clicked yes. If the person clicked no, I simply want the message box to go away as if it never popped up. So we really don't need the else if in this situation. Sorry for that confusion. So there you have it, folks. In this situation, when I run the program, it's as if this button is now an exit button. And if I click it, I get this message box with a yes-no button combination. If I click yes, a number six is stored behind the scenes in my variable answer. And that six makes uh, the program then exit because of the application.exit command.
See that? But if I run the program and hit no, we ask, will the program exit? No, it won't, because the number seven is stored in the variable answer. And because seven is not equal to six, we do not application not exit. The message box just goes away as if it never popped up. So this is how you could give a user a chance to not exit a program if they maybe accidentally click the button uh, that said exit. And this was overall an example of how to use what I call an advanced message box that has more than just one parameter in the parentheses of the show method.